Game compilations are pretty awesome. I have loved them going all the way back to Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo. I feel like these collections of games are an entire experience in their own because maybe, yeah, you played a couple of them, but then you'll spot two titles you've never experienced before. That's why many people like myself look forward to the reveals for games on the Super Nintendo Classic, the PlayStation, the Genesis, because it's all about finding out what's going to be compiled into one package. Now in those cases, they focused on games that already came out. Maybe you didn't play them before, but they were readily available. Valve did something very different with the Orange Box. Because yeah, it included Half-Life 2, which came out in 2004, but it also offered other experiences for the very first time that people still love and play today. Hey everybody, Juan here, welcome back. Today, we'll be talking about Half-Life 2 as part of the Orange Box, which came out in 2007. Now, I'm very happy at the fact that I finally get to talk about this game because Half-Life 2 is considered by many to be one of the greatest games of all time. So playing it in 2021 or 2021, is it worth playing now or is it just nostalgia talking and maybe the game's not all that great? If you've played the game recently, you go down to the comment section, my friends, right after subscribing and let me know what you thought about this game. And then I'll also be sprinkling in some general impressions about the orange box, but I'll be saving deeper discussions about Team Fortress 2 and Portal for future videos. This is going to be a bittersweet video as I'll be spending most of my time talking about why I love Half-Life 2 and why I definitely think you should play it in 2021. But I'll also share the problems with the version that I played and the challenges with the orange box on the PS3 as a whole. As I mentioned before, Half-Life 2 was released in 2004 and is available on multiple consoles. I'd say Half-Life is one of those uh, pillars of gaming, because whether you've played any of these games or not, you definitely know someone that has. And there's a damn good reason why people still talk about these games and they want more of the experiences. They are just incredible to play. So what do you get in the orange box? You get Half-Life 2 plus two episodes or DLC that expand the story. I haven't played those yet as I really want to do that on my computer because we'll be talking about some of the uh, problems that I encountered on the PS3 and I want to have the best experiences with those uh, DLCs. We also get the first Portal game which is easily one of the best puzzle games of all time. I remember when I first played it on PC, I didn't really know what to expect. I thought that visually the aesthetic was very different from anything else that I was uh, into before. But between the environment, the creativity, the characters, I just loved that so much and I really had no expectations going in. And if that wasn't enough, we also got Team Fortress 2, one of my favorite first person shooters of all time. I spent so many hours playing as uh, the soldier, the heavy, the medic, just not on PS3. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, let's focus on my awesome experience with Half-Life 2. And then afterwards, I'll show a bit of Portal and my attempt at playing Team Fortress 2 on PS3. Because yeah, the servers are actually still online, but you'll see what happened. I went into Half-Life 2 not having beaten the original game, and I know, I really gotta get to that. And even without the context of the first title, I love people. I loved every single chapter of Half-Life 2. I really got to understand why it's so special to many people, and hopefully I do a good job explaining why here. And let's keep in mind we're talking about a game from 2004 that I think is still incredible in 2021 or 2021. Here we go. Ah! Damn it, get it off me! Even though the visuals may not be as great as newer games, it's still impressive to look at, especially when you consider all the things happening on screen at one point or another. Characters and voiceover are surprisingly good as well, which really helps the flow of the story. Patch him up and get him to the back as soon as he's stable. Gordon Freeman. It's incredible you made it. We've been getting communications from Alex. I'll see if I can reach her again. And it was surprising because when we go back to the early 2000s, a lot of these games, maybe the uh, gameplay mechanics were there, but then somebody would talk and it would just break that immersion. And here, it was the opposite. Not only was the gameplay great, the characters really sucked you into the story. But the real focus here is the gameplay. You play as Gordon Freeman, a physicist that talks about as much as Link does. You see, he's not just smart, he's apparently also good with uh, weapons, driving, and pretty much anything else he needs to do. I assume the first Half-Life game provides a little bit more background on him, as this one just kind of assumes you know who he is, but despite that, I quickly got the concept. He's kind of a big deal. 
people know him. The game set about 20 years after the events of the first one, and things aren't looking too great due to many experiments that didn't go according to plan. There's also a complete takeover from the Combine, which took control of a ton of things, which quickly establishes why the streets aren't just crowded with a whole lot of people. Now this means that you're forced to sneak your way around multiple buildings, speaking to other members of the Resistance to continue progressing throughout the story. Half-Life 2 focuses on rescue missions and infiltrating certain areas, but don't think that the whole game is just you walking around as Gordon Freeman. You actually get a surprisingly large amount of parts in the game where you're riding on vehicles, whether it be a car, a water-based vehicle, and it really helps just shift the focus so it's not so monotonous, right? There's not just an abundance of shooting. If anything, I'd say you spent most of the game walking around almost like it was a platformer instead of a first-person shooter. And that right there is what I loved about this game because every single chapter, I was surprised by a new element that I'd introduced. And I go as far as to say that mechanically, this is easily one of the most satisfying games that I've ever played. There's just so much room to get creative thanks to the gravity gun and the ragdoll physics. And sometimes it does look a little bit janky, but I think it's kind of like the uh, the good jank, right? Where something doesn't look like it went according to plan, but the whole process of figuring out, well, how can you get by this door? I just love that whole process. I mean, friends, look at this. Now tell me that isn't satisfying. Now let's keep in mind once again that this game came out in 2004, and there's a couple of parts that definitely do feel dated, but it's actually not in a bad way. You see the whole story is split into multiple chapters, and as you continue to walk around the world, you'll sometimes bump into these uh, kind of weird loading screens as they load the next area, and that's something I think games have gotten a lot better at, and it does break the immersion, especially on the PS3, where I assume the load times are a lot larger or longer than uh, the ones on PC. But yeah, when we combine the gameplay to the theme, to the characters, like there's all these zombies with just chicken heads, there's some parts of the game that instead of daytime, it's nighttime, but then there's also like a slight tone of horror music. I love that because it really does change the tone and even the way that you actually play. And it's kind of funny because playing this game now, I totally understand why so many people love the crowbar. And it's because you can pretty much move or break almost any object in the game. There's always a couple of exceptions, but generally speaking, if you see some wooden planks or some kind of table, you can break that. And that actually comes to play throughout the story where you could be wondering, well, what do I do? I took down all the enemies. Where do I go next? And yeah, you actually have to break something so you continue to make some progress. One of my favorite parts of the game involved almost no enemy encounters, at least up until a certain point, so join me in this lovely story. Okay, I'm about to try the thing that nobody asked for, so I need to get over there, but I can't touch the sand. And I realize that I can actually lift this and uh, grab it and sort of move it. I don't know if this is the game and, and, and what it intends me to do, but I'm gonna friggin' try it anyway, so let's see here. Uh oh, okay, okay, not the best start. I feel like I feel the anxiety, but we're, we're making progress people This is gaming in 2021. Okay, forget about the ps5s and the, oh, oh Okay, we don't we don't want any of them uh, evil creatures. I could jump but you know what I want to play it safe So let, let's try here Do we make it? This is the future of gaming from a game that came out in like what 2004 we're almost there Oh, oh, oh. Oh my god, no! That was not part of the plan! That was not part of the plan! Oh my goodness! Die! 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 Woo! 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 No, no, don't make me fall! Don't make me fall! Okay, okay. And that is why I love Half-Life 2. What was great about that clip is that I posted that on Twitter and I got so many replies from people telling me, wow, I never thought about playing that section like that. Some people just plow through all of that and they had a lot of enemies show up on screen. Others implemented a little bit more strategy, but it was the whole process of even though this is a linear game, it's pretty obvious where you need to go. How you actually go about getting there is entirely up to you. You can do the obvious stuff if you want, 
but you can also challenge yourself to think outside the box and that right there is what I love about Half-Life 2 because sometimes I think we limit ourselves as gamers between two different experiences. One of them are the linear games, but then on the flip side you have open world games and historically I have said that those games are just not for me. I fall off, I get bored, and this game takes a couple of those elements in 2004 people and blends them together with a very linear experience and the whole process is once again just so damn satisfying. I played this game in 2021 and I can tell just how important this is in overall gaming history. It feels like you're playing something that really is a big deal. And I'm not even talking about a few things that I won't spoil for you because I really do want you to experience this whole game. So a lot of what you've been looking at in this video is about the first half of the game. So before we talk about the orange box on PS3, I have to say that I had an unbelievable time with Half-Life 2. It's one of those things that I think is going to happen a lot throughout this year because at first I wanted to just smack myself for not having played this game when it first came out. But then afterwards I thought to myself, Juan, that was actually kind of good because I get to play this game now with no rush, no pressure. I just get to absorb the whole experience and enjoy it for myself and then share it with all of you. The gameplay is easily the main reason you want to play this game, but there's so much more. The little details that it's sometimes hard to even describe, so I hope that visually you can totally get why I think it's so special. More so than the action, what I loved about the game was the silence. It's figuring out where do you go next, and the fact that the game really lets you breathe, and I think not all games uh, do that properly because it can either be too much action or too much silence. Here, the silence is just just as important as using a gun. Now, having said all of that, would I recommend that you play the version on PS3? Honestly, it's it's okay, but I've heard some not so great things about the episodes and I did encounter a couple of glitches. The most annoying one was the sound. Throughout the game, it would just randomly start to crackle. I actually thought it was my speakers. And then I went online and people said, look, that's just part of it. Even if you reload your save, that's gonna happen. So whenever I was swimming, sometimes that would start happening. I would actually lower my volume because that got a little bit annoying. Now this may or may not happen to you, but look, if you wanna play this game, you can probably play it on almost any computer. It's a game from 2004, so you don't even need a fancy computer. And the orange box did also come out on Xbox 360, and that one did continuously get updates. So if you wanna play the whole box, maybe that's the version to check out. I will, however, say it's interesting to play this one just because it was outsourced to EA. Valve itself did not work on the PS3 version of the orange box because they were pretty much anti-Sony at that time. That's why we never got the Left 4 Dead games on PS3. So if you want to get this version for the curiosity of it and just to experience it, the good, the bad, and the ugly, then check it out. Now, to talk about Portal and then quickly Team Fortress 2, this is when this version of the orange box quickly falls apart because I can talk about a lot of things or I can show you this. Holy crap, frame drops. Oof. Okay, I get it. It's like that specific angle. You're, you're seeing so many parts of the map, I just can't handle that. Portal is technically playable and it's not ugly to look at, but depending on where you place the portals, man, that frame rate will be dipping. But if you only have a PS3 and you've always heard about Portal and you want to check it out, I mean, you can kind of play this version. I'm not going to sit here and openly say it is worth playing in 2021 or 2021 for the PS3 itself, but the option is there. And Team Fortress 2. Keep in mind, this is an online first person shooter and I saw that the servers were still online. People were telling me to check it out. Apparently people have modded it somehow and added some of the game modes on PC. Now, I assume that's why this happened to me when I tried to play online. Every single time I would spawn and this was what happened. I couldn't play, I couldn't move, I started getting a headache. So if anybody can play this, please let me know because I went online, I looked at videos and I wanted to make sure I tested out the vanilla version of Team Fortress 2, not modded or anything like that. Because hey, if you just buy the orange box, hoping to play all these games without any modifications, technically, at least for me, TF2 was unplayable. 
And friends, those have been my impressions about Half-Life 2 as part of the Orange Box. The more that I played the game, the more that I wondered how a couple of the things would perform on PC because I haven't even got to talking about the uh, HD mods, the overhauls, the texture packs that people have developed, and obviously uh, none of that's available on the PS3. So as I play the episodes, eventually I'll do a deeper dive into the story itself. You'll notice that I mainly focused on the gameplay because I really think that is the meat and potatoes of the game. That's the main experience. That's the main reason why I really do think you should play it in 2021 or 2021. And generally speaking, I think the story is excellent because it's simple. It's very easy to understand, but what happens in the world, the lore, the characters, that's what really gets you hooked. So I would love to know. What do you think about Half-Life 2, the orange box? And also like, has there been another similar package that has come out recently with an older game, but then you also got access to a portal, Team Fortress, which even when we talk about that eventually, you know, you gotta go all the way back to Team Fortress Classic. So that in itself can be an entire conversation. And hopefully all of you enjoyed this as we are on the road, my friends, to 7,000 subscribers. That is unbelievable. Thank you so much for your support. I love you all. So if you like what I do, make sure to subscribe, click on that bell, and uh, so little funny part is I recorded the voiceover before my mouth was swelling because of a toothache. So in the on camera parts of these videos, I've been trying to just open my mouth to not have this weird lisp that I've been having with these past few days. But hopefully I was presentable enough. So up until next time, thank you for watching and supporting and take care, everybody.